Wow. There's people out there. Hey, uh, my name is DeAndre. How y'all doing? Good, okay. Does anybody here have a grandfather or a granddad or a pop pop? Anybody? Okay, so people. I got a granddad and um, he's like really strict. He's always on my case. DeAndre, pull up your pants. DeAndre, wear a belt. DeAndre, speak up straight. DeAndre, watch your language. Always something. Makes you wonder, what was my granddad like when he was a little kid? One day we were moving some boxes in the basement and I saw this old time newspaper and on the front page of the newspaper was this big photograph and the headline said, Negro children go to jail. And it had a photograph of all these little kids who were in jail. Guess who was right in the middle of those little kids in jail? My grandfather, yep. Couldn't miss him. Same round eyes, long neck, same big ears. My grandfather still has some big ears today. I'm telling you, this is like really big ears. Anyway, you couldn't miss him. That was him. My grandfather was in jail when he was a little kid. Holy sh- I mean, wow. I had to find out what that was all about. And so as the story unfolds, when I learned that my grandfather was a little kid, he was a little kid in the South, in Alabama. And when he was a little kid, they had a lot of signs in little places all over the place. And some of them looked like this. They said colored. And some of the signs looked like this. They said whites only. And they were like in department stores and grocery stores and Uh, the train stations and the bus stations. They even were on water fountains. So if you were in a store or the train station or the bus station or even at a water fountain and you saw a sign that said colored, well, that meant if you were colored or Negro or African American or black, then you could go to that store or you could eat in that restaurant or you could get a ticket in that train station or you could drink at that water fountain. But if you were in a store or a train station or a grocery store or even at a water fountain and it had a sign that said whites only, well that meant, well you get the idea. Can you imagine? That was called segregation. They were trying to keep colored people or black people away from white people. Man, can you imagine if we had those signs today in McDonald's or Burger King or Target or Chipotle? No, I mean, I, I, I just can't imagine anything like that. But that was called segregation. And there were a lot of people back then who didn't like that idea either. So they were trying to figure out what they could do about those signs and get rid of the signs. They had a meeting in the 16th Street Baptist Church that was the largest church in Birmingham, Alabama. People met inside the church and they said, what are we going to do about these signs? And what are we going to do about segregation? There was a lot of discussion back and forth. And there was one man, he was a young guy, he worked with the youth church. And his name was James Bevel. James Bevel said, brothers and sisters, we need to figure out how to train our young people to protest bond violently, and we will fill up the jails. We will fill up the jails, and we will have a children's crusade. And then somebody will pay attention to our civil rights. That was James Bevel's idea. Now, not everybody thought that sending their child to jail was a good idea. Even the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. didn't like that idea. But Fred Shuttlesworth, He was a reverend in Birmingham, Alabama, and he was an activist, and he knew that those signs were a lot of trouble, and he knew that they had to do something. So Fred Shuttlesworth said, you got to use what you got. So they trained young people to protest nonviolently. Now, when you protest nonviolently, that means you can't be violent. So if somebody hits you 
or somebody throws a rock at you, or somebody spits at you, you can't hit them back. You can't do anything, nothing. I couldn't do it. No, man, I, I could not do that. If somebody hit me or spit on me, oh, no, man, you, that, that would just be all. No, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But these children, these kids, they learned how to protest nonviolently. So on the day before the protest, there was a, uh, a radio DJ. His name was Pretty Boy Shelley. Pretty Boy Shelley got on the radio and he said, children, there's going to be a party in the park. And they knew that was code to protest. And so on 12 o'clock on that day, kids left school. They jumped out of windows. They ran out of doors. They came from all over Birmingham, Alabama, and they congregated right in front of the 16th Street Baptist Church. Now, they knew that they were going to have to face the police, and the police showed up. They did. They showed up with their batons, just like everybody knew that they would. But since the kids were protesting nonviolently, they didn't make a fuss. They didn't fight. So when the cop cars came, the police cars came, and they took the kids away. Now, these kids came from all over Birmingham, Alabama, and this got some news. So people were paying attention to what was going on with this children's crusade. That was day one. On day two, more kids showed up. They came from all over Birmingham. They came from other cities. They came from sometimes as far as 14 miles away. Now, mind you, they didn't have Uber and they didn't have Lyft. So these kids were walking a long way. And on that day, the police showed up. And this time, they brought attack dogs. I want you to know these dogs were some kind of mean. These dogs were trained to bite into you and, and like tear you apart. Those are like vicious dogs. Also, the fire department showed up. The fire department showed up and they had water hoses. These water hoses were so powerful, they would blow these kids down the street. They even blew the adults down the street. This was, caught, this was caught on the news because when these kids were blown away, it was caught on television and people saw what was going on. Also, because there were so many kids that showed up, all the schools were filled up, um, all, the, uh, all the jails was, were filled up and they had to start using schools to, to hold the kids. Also, there were so many kids protesting that all the cop cars were filled up, so now they had to start using yellow school buses to take the kids away. And they started using schools to hold the kids. That was day two. On day three, you know what happened? More kids showed up. They showed up from all over Birmingham, Alabama, they came from other cities. Now, because the news reporters were there and the television people were there, people were hearing about this crusade from a lot of different places. And all eyes were on Birmingham, Alabama. And as they suspected, the policemen showed up, the dogs showed up, the firemen showed up. But this time, the firemen, they didn't put on their water hoses. They were just tired. Bill Connor, he was the head of the fire department and also he was a, a head of the police department. He said, turn those water hoses on. Blow those kids down the street. Just blow them away. Just blow them away. And then he said a couple words I can't say. But he said, just blow them away right now. But they didn't turn on the water hoses. They just stopped. And that was a standstill. And then something happened. The news reporters were there, the television cameras were there, everybody was waiting to see what was happening, and that was a standoff. A few weeks after that day, they changed the laws, so those white only laws, uh, those white only signs, and those colored only signs, those signs that we used to see all over the place, they were illegal. 
And that was all because of the Children's Civil Rights Crusade. And my grandfather was right up in the middle. Hot day, I mean, wow. <laughs> That's my story. Thank you for listening to my story. I do have a, um, I have a rap because when I found out what my granddad, what my granddad did, I thought uh, I would do a poem because I am kind of a poet. And what I'd like to do is share my poetry with you, and then I'm going to ask for three people to come up and say it with me. Um, so let me say it first, and then I have to make an announcement, okay? So uh, here it goes. Segregation, integration, these were talked about across the nation. One means separate, clap, clap. The other means together, clap, clap. Children's crew say they knew it's better, clap, clap, and they made a change. So I'd like to have three people come volunteer, but wait a minute, I need to make an announcement because we need to do this right. I got a piece of paper here, um, and I had to read it. So um, I'm going to ask for three people to volunteer, but you had to be able to read, and you had to be able to clap. So. If you would like to volunteer, please remember you will be recorded while on stage for our live stream and YouTube audiences. Um, reach out to a staff member to sign our consent form at the end of the program. Got that? Okay, we need three volunteers. Can I see a volunteer? Somebody just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. You just need to be able to read and clap. Anybody want to do it? An adult can do it too. You don't have to be a little kid. But you have to be able to read. I see one volunteer. Come on up. Come on up this way, please. Come on up this way. Another volunteer. I see another hand. Come on up. Come on up. Can I have a boy or a man? We got two women, two girls. Is there a boy who, who can read and help us do this? Come on, don't be shy. OK, I need one more volunteer. I don't care who it is. One more volunteer. OK, come on up. Come up this, this way on the stairs. Just. Come up on these stairs right here. You, yeah, 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 you, you raise your hand. Yeah, okay, cool, all right. Um, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask you guys to come over here on the front of the stage. Let's come over on this side because we have more space on this side. We're gonna do this. And each one of you is gonna take one of these. Would you pass that down? And let me get over here to see what, uh, who's got what. This is my poem. Uh, choo -choo -choo. So you're number one, and it looks like you're the last one, so you need to change places with her. Yeah, just change places. That, that's my, this is my poem, right? Is this the way it goes? Yeah, that's right, okay, that's, that's it. All right, so everybody from here on this side, what's your name? Yuri. Yuri, Yuri these are gonna be your team and they're gonna help you say this part. Can you look at it and read it and say it with your people? Read it first and then your people will help you read it. Say, go, go ahead. Segregation, integration, these were talked about across the nation. Okay, so that's the, that's the word and this is your team and here's the rhythm that your team has to say it in, okay? We're gonna say it like this. Segregation, integration, these were talked about across the nation. Get your team to say that. Yeah, right. That's your team. Those are your people. Come on over here. Come on over here, Yuri. Let's do it. This is your team. One, two, three, go. Segregation, Segregation integration. These, these were, were talked about across the nation. Okay, that's your part. Remember that. And remember the rhythm because this has a rhythm, okay? Okay, Yuri, stand right here. And what's your name? Francis. Francis. Francis, this is your part. Can you read that? One. Oh, oh, yeah. Francis' team, you're like in the center right here, and you guys have to clap, okay? So help Francis. Go take it away. One means separate, clap, clap, other means together, clap, clap. Clap, clap. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, think your team, I think your team is kind of learning how to clap. Okay, okay. Let, let's do this again. Okay. okay, this is the rhythm. One means separate, clap, clap. The other means together, clap, clap. Oh, they learned how to clap real quick. They called, oh, y'all are fast. Okay, and you, what's your name? Uh, Chloe. Chloe. Chloe, can you read your part? And your team is on that side of the audience. Read your part so they can hear it first. Okay, so point it to your, to your team. Your team's over there so they can see what it is. And your team, can you read it with Chloe? 
Children Crusade, they knew what's better. Clap, clap, and they made a change. And I think we should probably clap at the end of that. Everybody can clap, go. And they made a change. Clap, clap. Ready to try it? Okay, uh, let's, Chloe, let's try it with your team one more time, okay? Children's Crusade, say they knew what's better. And they made a change. I think y'all are ready to do this from the top. Make my poem sound wonderful. All right, let's go ahead. Yuri, you first. You got the first team. Let's start off with you. One, two, three, go. Segregation. Segregation, Integration. These These were were talked about across the nation. One means the The other means together. together. Children's Crusade. They do what's better. They made a change. I like it. But you know what, y'all? We're on television. We are live streaming. So let's do it one more time for the camera. Let's do it. Last time, showtime. Right. Here we go. One, two, three, go. Segregation, integration. These were talked about across the nation. Good. One means separate, the other means together. Child Crusade, they knew what's better, and they made a change. Excellent job. I think we need to give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. Thank you, guys. Okay, you can come here and just, uh, just, put, your, just put your signs down right there. And for being so brave, I just want to show our appreciation. You get a star, and you get a star, and you get a star. Thank you you so much. Now you can go back to the audience. Uh, Probably the mic. Somebody can take their microphone. Uh, Somebody somebody down there can give you a microphone. Well, that is our story of the children's crusade of the civil rights movement. Thank you very much. I am DeAndre, and I'm going to leave you now and let the human talk to y'all. See ya. Thank you for joining us for this presentation. Right now, what we'd like to do is have a little discussion, a QA, and a and a demonstration. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about my work as a puppeteer, and then you'll have a chance to ask me some questions. But first, uh, give me a chance to pull some things out of a bag, because I brought some stuff to help me with, the, um, with our demonstration. Whenever we do a show, I, al- I often get a lot of questions about, how do you make the puppets? So. I'm going to show you some of the materials that I use to make puppets like DeAndre. And DeAndre is one of about, I have about 40 puppets. Those are rod puppets. And when I make them, it's a pretty long process. It's a pretty slow process. And it requires some sculpting, and it requires painting. But I I should first start by saying I got into puppetry as a, little, as a kid, I played with puppets as a kid, and my first puppets were hand puppets. And then later on, I played with um, marionettes, or string puppets. But the puppets I make now, I first start off with some clay. This is a, a, clay, this is a clay head for a puppet. So I start, this is a, 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 it's more like a plasticine, so I make the, the head and the hands are made out of plastic wood. So I start off with the head and the hands, and then I have to use plaster and I make a mold. So the mold, this is a mold for a head and it comes into three parts. So there are two pieces for the head. This is the, like this side of the face and this is for this side of the face. And then this part of the mold is for the back of the head. Once I have my mold together, I use a material that's called plastic wood. And I know I got some in here. Oh yeah, this is, called, um, this is a plastic wood putty. And it looks like Play-Doh. I got a lot of dust around here. It looks like Play-Doh. So when, you, when you're molding it, you put the Play-Doh inside the mold like this. You just put it in there like that. And then I have to put it into water and it stays overnight because it has to be, it has to, it dries in water, which is kind of strange. But that's how it, that's how it cures, that's how it dries. So after 12 hours of that, I take it out and then I have something that looks like, I have, I have the, uh, an example of the hands, not the head, but um, 
Once I have the hands out of the mold, they come out looking something like this. It's really rough. These are already sanded down. So they're rough, and I will take a file, and I file them down to make it, to make it smooth. And then when I get to the body, the body is like making a doll. The body is soft sculpture. So I sew a body together, and then I fill it, and then I fill it with filler, and I attach the hands here, and this is a rod that goes through, this rod goes through the body, and it connects to the head, and this is where the, the head is at the top. I have to cut a hole out of the head, because when the head is put together, it looks like that. So I cut a hole into the head, and I also cut a hole to make eyes and a hole to make the mouth so that when I get ready to add the eyes, I take two ping pong balls and they go inside the head like that. So the eyes will show up like that. And then I have to put a rod through that and then the string, and the string comes out and the, the string um, controls, controls the eyes. The same thing with the mouth. The mouth goes here at the bottom There'll be a hook inside the, inside the mouth and a string on the bottom of the lip. And then when I pull the string, he'll be able to talk like that. So that's how, that's how he comes together. And as you saw with DeAndre in the performance, I was operating DeAndre with rods. The rods are attached to the hands. So I would drill a hole in the hands and then attach the rod to the hands. And he would perform like that. So that, that's just a quick, just a quick view of how, um, how the puppet is actually made. What else did I want to share with you? Oh, the puppet that you saw that told the story, that was DeAndre. He's a rod puppet. But sometimes I make hand puppets. I'm using the same material, but the design of the puppet is different. So the plastic wood is used for the head and also for the hands but the way that the puppet is operated is different. It's a hand puppet, so my hand goes inside the head. Instead of a rod in the head, it would go like this. And then uh, this, what happens? I, see, because uh, I'm not a rod puppet. But I could have rods in my hands if I wanted to, I just don't need them. Sometimes, sometimes I have rods in my hands, sometimes I don't. But I never have rod in my head because his hand is always in my head. Yep. So that's how he works. That's a hand puppet. I was interested in puppetry when I was a kid. I stopped when I was in high school because it wasn't cool to do puppets when you're in high school. But when I was in college, I decided to try it again because I had an amazing instructor who did kites. His name was Martin Purrier. He's a sculptor. And he was doing these really elaborate kites. And I said, why are you doing these kites? And he said, well, I did kites when I was young. I wanted to know how I respond to them now. And I thought, that's a cool idea. Now that I'm a college student, let me see how I respond to something that I was involved in as a kid. And I realized it's puppetry. So I started doing puppets. And I realized I like working with puppets. So that's when I got back into them, and I started working them again. Eventually, I started being curious about puppets from other countries and other continents. So I started traveling to Africa just to look for puppets. And I, would, I found them mostly in Western Africa, and in places like Mali and Senegal and Ghana, I found uh, puppets. This is a puppet that I found in Mali, West Africa, and I was just really interested because it's a rod puppet. It has a rod in the body like this, and it has rods that control the arms. And I thought, wow, that's a rod puppet. I could, I could learn a lot from this. And sometimes puppets like this are performed under a stage, but sometimes a puppet like this is made much larger, and the person who's performing it is in costume, and the puppet appears at the top of the person's head, like this. So the, the puppeteer is, is actually the, the costumed operator, and the puppet is performing like this. This puppet is made out of wood, and I, I just think it's a, a beautiful example of puppetry. So I learned a lot about different puppets from different countries and different continents, and I'm still learning today. That's what I do. Any questions for me? Yes, one and then two. Yes? What's the hand puppet's name? Uh, that's Kyle. 
Yeah, his name is Kyle. <laughs> uh, there was a, a question over here, then two, and then three, and then four. Yes. Um, have, you, have you ever worked with string puppets? Funny you should ask. I played with string puppets when I was a kid. Those are marionettes. And this is an example of a marionette. Do you have string puppets? Do you, do you have string puppets? Um, anybody who works with string puppets know that one of the challenges of string puppets is that the, the strings always get caught up in chords. So it's a little bit like this. But this is a puppet from Ghana. And um, I don't really perform with them now because of like, things like this. Because before a performance, you always have to spend time untangling the strings of the puppet so the puppet can operate. But when it's operating correctly, you use strings to like, move the legs and to move the arms, like that. Um, with the rod puppet, as you saw, you don't, you don't have the same problem with strings. So it's easy to like, pick something up really quickly and put it down really quickly. But when you look at marionette shows, uh, puppeteers who work with marionettes, the, those puppets move a little differently because of the strings. They can't really move as fast as rod puppets, but they have another kind of magical movement to them. Yeah, so, yeah, I've worked with string puppets. <laughs> One and then two. Yeah. Was there a question over here? I thought I saw a hand. Yes. She needs a mic. This puppet? He doesn't have a name yet, but I'm, I'm thinking, and you can help me with this. I'm thinking his name is going to be Larry Liar or Fib and Phil. One, one, he's going to be Larry, Lion Larry or Fib and Phil. And his character is, go is going to be one that he's out, you know, do you know somebody who's like always telling something is not true? Do you know anybody like that? I do. Um, and there are a few people that, that are like that. They just, they just keep talking, and you know that what they're saying is just not true. So that's what his character is going to be. He's either going to be Fib and Phil or Lion Larry. You had a question over here? Yes. Why do you really like puppets? Why do I really like puppets? Because I played with them when I was young, and they're, well, they're fun to play with, and they're fun to perform with. I, I just like that, I, and I also like telling stories. Puppets are great for telling stories. And they're good for, not just for kids, but they're also good for adults, because adults like puppets too when they're really well done. Good question, yes? Why is the Children's Crusade something important to share with kids now? Say that again? Why do you think the Children's Crusade that history is important to share with kids now? Why is the Children's Crusade important to share? I think it's important to share because it's an important part of history. And also, when you think about history, we often think about dead people and old people. But you, you rarely think about children in history. And this story, as you found out, when his granddad was a little kid, he was involved in something that was very important. And we don't hear that story a lot. So that's, that's what intrigued me about the story, the fact that you had this crusade that these kids were protesting nonviolently, and when I thought about what nonviolence means, they were very courageous. They had to be really, really brave to go out there and to be trained not to respond when somebody hits you. Uh, like, as DeAndre told you, he couldn't do it. He, he just, he couldn't, he could not fight, he could not not fight back if somebody hit him. He couldn't do it. But he thought it was very important that these other children learn how to do that. One and then two, yes. Do you name all of your puppets? Do I name all the puppets? Yes, they all have names. They all have names and they all have backstories. Uh, that, that helps me to remember who they are. But when we're performing, um, I will have them audition for different stories. So uh, DeAndre isn't always, he isn't always that, that one character. He might do something else. So the, the puppets have their names, but they're, they're like actors. You know, actors take on roles and they do different things. My puppets are like actors. Yeah. I, you had another question? How do I remember who's who? That's a good question. How many people are in your family? 
How do you remember who's who? It's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. After a while, you know who's got a long neck, who's got big ears, who's got a large nose, who's got a big mouth, who's like really funny, who's like really sad all the time. You remember who's who after a while. And that's why the puppets all have characters. Question over here. Yes. Uh, what's your favorite puppet? Oh, I don't do that. <laughs> no, there, there would be trouble if I had a favorite puppet. <laughs> um, I like all my puppets equally. They're different. They, they, all, they all have different characters and they all move differently, so I have to, I, I have to like them for who they are. And some of them are kind of, I have a couple of puppets who are kind of prickly. Um, they're not easy going. There's one puppet who only deals with adults. She does not like children. And her, she, her role is actually, she is, a, she is a docent for museums. She was, de she was designed to, to, to she, was de <laughs> she was designed to lead tours for adults. And at the time I was working at the Baltimore Museum of Art. I was a director of education at the Baltimore Museum of Art. And I wanted to create a place where adults could play in the galleries. Not for kids, just for adults. So Miss Lily was developed to conduct tours for adults. And we were very clear about this. When we, when we advertised Miss Lily's tours, we said, no brilliant children, no brilliant six-year-olds, only adults. And she, she began her tour by saying, I'm Miss Lily and I will be conducting this tour. If you have a child in your possession, would you please take them to the workshop to the left? That's how she began, and then she, <laughs> then she gave the tour. Yeah, like I said, all the, characters, all the characters are very different. And there are other characters who really love kids, and they, they do well with kids. Um, and there are actually, there are more of those. Yeah, <laughs> there happen to be more of those. Good questions. Any other questions for me? Does anybody here have puppets at home? Ah, nice, okay. What kind of puppet do you have? And what kind of puppet do you have? I saw a hand over here somewhere. Is it a hand puppet? You have one. Oh, you had one. What kind of puppet was it? Was it a hand puppet? Oh, good. Okay. And I saw a hand over here. What kind of puppets? Um, I had a sock puppet. You had a sock puppet. And okay. And their name was and I named, I didn't know what to name them, so I just called them um, I just called them tablecloth. Okay, that works. And I saw another hand. You've got a puppet? Uh, a marionette and some hand puppets. You have a marionette. And um, I do shadow puppets also. And shadow puppets. Oh, nice. Do you guys know what shadow puppets are? Yeah, shadow puppets, uh, they require light. So you have a light going on, and you see the, the puppet will be making, like if I have a, a shadow here, whatever the puppet's doing, you work on a shadow. Good, nice. Any other questions for me? Well, thank you guys for coming out. I really had a good time meeting, meeting with you. And go home and have some fun. <laughs>